Time to recap. TNA is hard to kill here on the Wrestling Observer Podcast as TNA has made his way back once again. Second coming. Here he is, the second chapter of a promotion that we thought was gone, say 2011. And Bruce Pritchard actually said the words, TNA is dead. Well, it never was. And it comes back tonight, officially. And a lot of changes actually happening. One of the things he definitely wanted to make sure to do throughout this night was to clear up some of the matches that were earned in terms of title matches. Because they had several things that were coming in. You had the Feaster fired, the Call Your Shot gauntlet. Those were cashed in tonight in terms of Jordan Grace going after the knockouts title against Trinity and Moose going up against Alex Shelley. So there's that. And those matches saw new title holders as Jordan Grace beats Trinity and Moose defeated Alex Shelley to now become new world champions. New knockouts champion, knockouts world champion, new world heavyweight champion. All that being said, there's a lot being put out as what they're planning right now. It was actually quite well put together in what they did. So in terms of the Knockouts World Championship, we see Trinity drop the belt after a 182-day reign. And she won it at Slammiversary back in July. A very significant run. And remember, she was right here for about a, week, about a year. So she, here she is once again. And I'm guessing that's going to be it for her because people are all trying to speculate now that with this, Trinity is going to be dropping back out and she's going to go back. I guess she's going back to WWE and might be back as early as the Royal Rumble as Naomi. I don't know. We're going to get that back. We know that Mercedes Monet was trying to be reached out for to be a part of this, but that didn't happen. And there was some pictures that showed that Mercedes, Mercedes Monet and Braley were in attendance to watch Trinity in her match where she did lose and drop the knockouts world title. So Jordan Grace, Jordan Grace, once again, becomes the champion third title reign. And now we're back to once again, where everything comes to, back into play. And as for the matches they had tonight, there were some matches that didn't really make much of a difference to me, but now we have the faction, the system with Brian Myers, Eddie Edwards, and Moose. You have Crazy Steve now, and apparently him. Rosemary Havoc are now back as Decay. That has become back as a, as a faction once again. They continue to go and build up with Jichelle Shaw, who is now the number one contender for the Knockouts World title, winning the Knockouts Ultimate X match where she beat Alicia Edwards, Dana Luna, Jody Threat, Tasha Steele, Zion Brookside, who now signed with TNA. Then they put PCO in with a match with Dirty Dango, and then it turned into a six-man tag, whatever. And after a, quite a while, MK Ultra holding the belts, Killer Kelly, Masha Slimovich, they dropped the belts in quick fashion, so now Decay's back once again with the Knockouts Tag Team titles. The one thing that was consistent, Chris Saban holds on to the DNA X division title. They're going to need to do some work in trying to build up that division where it was as TNA is best remembered. Because one thing we know for sure is that if TNA is working to build themselves back up and get their roster back up once again, they need to start, they need to start uh, replenishing the knockouts and the X division roster. And maybe they need to look at some other names to bring in. No problem with them bringing in some new names in any way because they did bring in a handful, a good handful of WWE free agents that have came into the space. So now we have Dana Brooke that was in the stands, a little bit of a, of a Tony Storm knockoff with Ash by Elegance. We'll learn about that soon enough. We also saw the Grizzled Young Veterans make their way in, James Drake, Zach Gibson, also being part of the TNA World Tag Team match for the fatal four way in that one where ABC retains the titles. I thought they might've make a change at this point, but no, they held on to it. And like I said, Chris, Chris Saban held on to the belt, still X division champion. They were going to keep him there at that spot. One of the things I was actually surprised by Alex Hammerstone 
So they put him out there with Josh Alexander in a featured feud. And a 15-minute match, one of the longest matches of the night, in the middle of the card. And Hammerstone pin, is pinned clean by by Alexander. Now he's, I guess there was a thing with me with him and being an MLW that I always thought a Hammerstone would get a chance to be moved up a little bit higher up the ranks and maybe would get a little bit more push. But I guess they're not going to look at him that way. He might have been World Heavyweight Champion in another promotion, but it's not considered that high of the level. They're going to take him. Obviously, there's a lot of talent behind Alexander Hammerstone. So they're going to humble him, put him back into the middle of the fold, and work his way up. And maybe there's a plan for him, much like Josh Alexander might have, where something will happen with those guys. We'll see what they do. And where they decide to develop the character moving forward. Surprised that he decided to make that shot. Matches were good across the board. I saw what they did tonight. In terms of what they brought back, bringing in some more roster talent that could help out in terms of things, that's what you want to do as well. And they obviously left you with something significant tonight, which people started talking about. So we know Trinity drops the Knockouts World title. Moose wins convincingly over Alex Shelley. And Alex Shelley held on to that belt for a long time as well. Again, another guy that, you know, Alex Shelley never had that belt before, but you see him here and he got a chance to go and work it. Alex Shelley finishes his reign after winning it against all odds, which was not a paper we expected to see a title change. But yes, Alex Shelley beating Steve Macklin. And now that world title picture looks much different. And it's obvious that those two titles, you know, the world heavyweight title, they're putting a lot more onus on and they're going to step it up. Moose gets his second title reign. And remember, Moose held on to that belt for a long time before. 182 days the first time. Plus, he also had that TNA World Heavyweight title, which was all considered in that. But Moose gets it. And after a long run, by the way. But he did resign. He comes back in again. Now he holds on to the belt. And next, we obviously look at who's going to probably be one of his first opponents. Or at least one of the first people that are going to be going after him anyway. Not only is he going to be wrestling in New Japan, but we see the debut of Nick Nemeth in TNA. So the former Dolph Ziggler, you know, when you look at some of the stars that have made their way out of WWE and trying to get themselves back up in a spot and see what they can do with themselves to really step out. It's fascinating. I mean, the last guy that really did this kind of thing right now to work his way into creating a name for himself once again outside of the entire gamut of WWE is Matt Cardona. Probably the best example. And in a way, EC3 starting to get his way there with the NWA title. But yeah, Matt Cardona. He has definitely built up his credibility, his his spot right now in terms of what he's doing. And he's already said right now he's making more money than he did in WWE as Zack Ryder. And the thing that Dolph Ziggler... Now is here, and yeah, you can always see that he was always a little bit underutilized, not in terms of like he was the workhorse, but his his level of stardom and how he's allowed to go ahead and be that top guy. And it wasn't ever always at that very top spot, but when necessary, when needed, he could always be used in the situation. He was a very good hand to have. But now Nick Nemeth comes in here, and Scott Demore now gets a chance to go and take this star with all the accolades that come behind him because everybody knows who it is. And now you're going to put him in here and let's see what happens. Him and Moose coming up in the future, taking on each other. Let's see how that works out. Next show will be Rebellion. They'll see if that actually works out well and what they decide to go and do with it. But to me, it's the, the change uh, into TNA... When I look at, okay, Jay Chung's a new announcer. Okay, fresh blood coming in there. I get that. The red and yellow colors is a nice bright look to what they did. They kept the four sides of the ring. New ramp, new lighting. That Palms Casino and Hotel, the, the, the venue that they had tonight was very nice. It looked really good. It's going to look significantly well when you look at what they have going on now with what they're setting up. 
for the most part, <clears throat> I mean, it's going to take time for them to still build up. There still have to be more things they're going to be doing besides the name of the TNA to help get themselves up to a higher level coming up. But right now, look, they're on Access TV. They've been able to get themselves, their ratings back up to a significant level to where it's respectable. If you have enough people in there to pay attention, it'll actually do pretty fine. It's so like for themselves, when I look at their numbers this year, yeah, we don't count too much about what they were doing after, you know, when they were just, you know, running reruns and running other content. But towards the end, they were still getting, you know, averaging 118,000 viewers in 2023, which is pretty good. Because if you want to compare them to what they were doing last year, that viewership would have been a little bit different, 105,000 for them. So they're getting slowly but surely. But the TNA name is going to bring some more interest to the product. And now we were just waiting because with TNA, they decided, okay, well, we're going to just take some time after Bound for Glory. Let's get things worked out so we can go and rebuild and restore the brand in a new light. And they did. It looks good. And putting some things back together and where they are right now, the excitement and embracing the new name of the brand, the return of the brand is what's what has to be what's going to be really working out for them well what's going to come out for them really well going forward like this step will give them a chance to move closer into being that number three promotion because right now ring of honor is just it's stagnant because tony khan is holding on to it he's kind of just place holding it right now with some of their titles and some of their things and they're running a show on honor club but really he wants that show on tv somewhere so he's trying to shop it around. That's what he wants to go and do. And until then, he's not putting too much emphasis on it anyway. And with that, that gives room for TNA to go ahead and start making them move into that number three spot. They are significantly number three right now. But to move themselves up to where they can get much more of a presence, that's what they need to work on next. So if Trinity's gone... And Jordan Grace now runs the helm, but there's obviously a pretty strong and a pretty significant knockouts division. The one thing you got to ask about is that if there are any stars in AEW, any other stars in WWE as well, when they become, when they get off the free agency list and their contracts, you know, the clauses they might have that might preclude them from being on, once we get to those, I think we get some more debuts where some of those other stars come in from AEW, WWE. I think there are going to be some wrestlers who are going to say, you know what? TNA is a new haven. And they go back to TNA or never get a chance to work there and now get to work it now or get a chance to just work in here. I think that's what's going to happen because Trinity has successfully built her capital back up after going away as Naomi. It really helped her out. Because Impact Wrestling did a great job heralding her as a champion. Finally got her going to be a women's champion, the knockouts champion, significant for her. Based on who you know that's held that belt before. It's going to help her out in the long run. So does, T does Triple H, does that team decide to go ahead and put her in a more significant spot when she comes back? Because is Triple H going to just treat her better than what Vince did? I mean, for someone like her, yeah, you would want to think that she's going to go ahead and be moved up and have matches either with Rhea Ripley or Bianca Belair or, you know, Sky and others and just get her back in there and finally give her the spot where she wants, where she can also try to be a champion in the company and with one of those two women's titles. With Nick Nemeth? I mean, maybe down the line, he does get that belt. But I like that Moose has got the belt now. Now everything's all set up. It's really, there's some changes, but there's still more to be done. And the other thing too is that they're changing the venues. The look of the show, that's a well-needed change. The production value did need a step up. They needed to look like they had more of a crowd. They needed to go ahead and have more lighting in there, a little more look to it. And they definitely did it. So I give them some credit on what they did tonight. I think it's just going to matter about who, who they decide to go and bring on board. Plus, I hope they do something more with the TV show. Because let me tell you, the TV show itself, besides the matches, 
everything in between, it's like there's nothing overly memorable. I really have gotten fatigued by most of the TV products on all these shows, to be honest. Watching as a regular TV viewer right now, I will say that it's been much more difficult and I will just catch myself watching more clips than anything else. It's, it's, it's sad to see that, but it's true because now I'm starting to feel like, you know, there are not all that these companies are all doing to make me feel like I need to go ahead and stay in and invest in the whole two or three hour experience. It's getting more difficult. Definitely getting more difficult. TNA was one of those because impact wrestling. First of all, I'm already trying to go and find it to watch it because I was not able to go. And, uh, usually, I got to watch it online, and Access TV doesn't give me an online source. With SmackDown for the WWE, remember, uh, like the the Fox app got taken down, so like they're not even running on there anymore. And there's no streaming places for it, and that's the other part that they think all these companies need to do. With Raw, yeah, I got USA, and then when SmackDown was over, USA will have that. But like where Raw goes after that. You know, does it go to Amazon Prime? And can it do it? I'd be interested in that, but there's much more to talk about this. We'll see what else comes out with the fallout of Hard to Kill, what we hear from it. But for the most part, kudos for TNA for coming back, resurrecting the brand. I'm happy. Toast to TNA for coming back once again. Let me take a quick swig of water for that. Thank you very much. And that's it. Kingofpodcasts.com is the website where you find all my content. Of course, you can always find some clips of the programs. You can get a little taste of what we've been talking about here on the show. You can find it on all my social media. So Instagram, threads, TikTok, LinkedIn, Facebook, and X, all right there at King of Podcasts. And of course, if you haven't done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you're following the show right now, because I know that with TNA and for Impact Wrestling, I always get a good audience for this, these recaps of these shows. And I thank you wholeheartedly all these years for always coming to listen to the TNA recaps right here or the impact wrestling recaps right here on the wrestling Zero podcast. So we'll come back Wednesday. We'll do a regular show. And until then come back for another wrestling Zero podcast because wrestling needs us.